What we see so far is that phosphorylated tau is largely increased, and specifically AD, uh, patients with um, Alzheimer's pathology. Uh, also, people that are perhaps not uh, diagnosed with AD clinically, but do have uh, AD pathology, and we do see that phosphorylated tau is increased in these cases. Uh, what we don't see is an increase in phosphorylated tau in front temporal lobe degeneration, and that is also in a way value to make a differentiation between AD and FTLD uh, clinical representation. Unfortunately, it's not a specific biomarker for FTLD, so we're still in search of that, but it's a specific biomarker for AD. Plasma phosphorylated tau-217 just boomed basically over the past two months. A lot of results came out. Uh, what I'm trying to do in my study is to see whether 217 has an added value over 181. Uh, perhaps it shows up earlier in uh, the disease, perhaps it's better at uh, reflecting um, tau pet pathology, uh, the pathology that we see with tau pet. So um, I think that's what we've seen so far. We've done um, a part of the study uh, in 210 cases, and there we see that the full change of phosphorylated tau-217 compared to 181 is larger. Uh, so it gives more of a difference that way, though um, 181 is already very good. You know, one thing that we see significant difference in is in representation of tau-pet, that 217 shows even better, well, reflects in a better way uh, the tau-pet pathology. We have a large cohort with both measures, with the same technology, um, and that will be a very thorough and robust one-to-one -one comparison, which one performs, so to say, better. Then I think it's gonna be very important to do this prospective study. So to be in a memory clinic, to measure plasma phosphorylated tau in actual patients, and show it to the medical doctors and say, does this help you with finding the right diagnosis? And do you want to implement this in clinical practice?